and I remember playing uh, John Fulbright a song, and there was a lady there that was from Oklahoma, which is where John Fulbright's from, and uh, she was like, I can't believe someone's playing John Fulbright right now, and I'm like, it's, I, it's, I did it just for you, I did it just for you. Absolutely. And so, and she had made, I, mean, I got extra tips. Hey, so. <laughs> there you go. Know your so, audience. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome to Room 6, the channel dedicated to the local music scene and the people that make it, including me and this guy. My guest today, I met him at a Homegrown Songwriter Showcase run by Hal Savar at the Strat. Uh, that show, unfortunately, is no longer being run. However, there's some exciting things coming down the pipe, I believe, uh, according to Hal. So if you haven't subscribed, definitely ring the bell so that you'll uh, be notified when I get notified about what's going on. I'm going to be uh, live streaming it. We'll uh, do a review of it. It's going to be awesome. In the meantime... I want to talk about my guest a little bit. You can catch him playing at Cleveland's in Boulder City, right? Correct. Yes, you can. He's a proud papa, teacher, singer, songwriter, poetry blogger, and fellow Foo Fighters fan. <laughs> Welcome to the channel, Dan O'Hara. Hi. Thank you for having me. I appreciate Punk. it. No worries. <laughs> mm. R.I.P. Taylor. Sadness. Mm. Taylor Hawkins. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Stick around, because he's going to be gracing us up in room six with quite a few songs, I think, of his uh, original stuff, including possibly one that's not released yet, so that'll be exciting. Wanted to start off the channel, uh, the, start, start off the channel, uh, I want to start off the interview with kind of a weird question. Illinois to Vegas? <laughs> yeah, um, I've been in Vegas since 06. Uh, oh, I, you got moved. Yeah. <laughs> um, I grew up. Um, on the southwest suburbs of Chicago, um, and um, me and uh, my then uh, my then wife at the time, uh, we decided just to pick up and move out here. Like I was an electrician at the time, and she was a teacher, or she still is a teacher. But we moved because there was a lot going on in that, that at that time, and we were like, we're sick of the cold, and. And let's just let's just do it. There's so. a lot of Chicagoans that are, are in Vegas now or are in Henderson. Um, surprisingly, in fact, some of our best friends uh, are from Chicago, mm -hmm. and, and the, they are loving it here. Um, yeah. They go they go there to visit. That's about it. Absolutely, I still go back a lot um, when I can. Mm -hmm. um, I, I do miss um, Chicago, um, but I don't miss Illinois or the weather that comes along with it. So. It's just kind of a. It's nice to go to the back and visit and see those people and things like that. But um, I don't need to stay there anymore. Il, il noir. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, how long have you been doing music? Um. So I uh, I've only been doing music seriously for the last about four years. Um. I'm kind of a late bloomer. Um. When it comes to music, uh, I didn't play. Uh, whole ton. I, I didn't even pick up a guitar until I was 20. Um, but the, uh, um, it was funny, um, my a buddy of mine um, convinced me to start a, a guitar club when I was teaching middle school. And that's kind of how it all started. It all started with, um, I had, I was, uh, my friend Murray, who was also one of my coworkers and teachers, like we just love music and mm -hmm. we used to talk about it all the time. And I noticed he had a guitar in his room one time. I was like, "Oh, do you play?" And and so we kind of just started talking that way. And then when we started, uh, and then one day I was just like at with conversations with him. I just was like, "I'm gonna I'm gonna start a an after school thing once a week." And then he helped me run it, and and then other adults from the school that also um, played. Mm -hmm. They would come in, some of the teachers or past teachers um, would, would come by or heard, heard that I started a club and they wanted to come by and jam basically. And so in my classroom uh, once a week after school for an hour, it, you know, I had a handful of kids and wanted to just, uh, and it wasn't a guitar, like I wasn't teaching anybody guitar. We were just, you wanna come and just play. Um, Come on over, like we're gonna have some fun, and uh, right on. And so I started writing music 
through that. And then, it, and then it just kind of started to snowball, and then I started writing lyrics. And I always wrote poetry and poems and things like that, so I just kind of melded the two together, and here we are. <laughs> cool. Are you still doing the poetry blog? Um, I haven't posted anything in, in, it's been a while since I've posted something. I was like, but, um, it, yeah, it's been a little while since i posted anything, but we'll do, uh, um, I, I still have it available so I can, if there's something that I really, really like, I'll put it, but I still, I write my own poetry, it's just, I haven't chosen to put anything on there, because a lot of the stuff that I write now goes into my music, mm -hmm. so I don't really put it on the poetry That's blog That's poetry's the gateway drug to solve yeah. <laughs> All right, um, well, if, if people want to check out your poetry, they can still, right? It's Correct. Still online? Yeah. All right, I'll, I'll put a link, what, one of these places here, but also in the description. Yeah. So... You're a Sox fan, and you married a New York fan? Well, we're not married. Uh, oh, I'm no. sorry. Sorry. Wait, wait. What did my notes say? My notes say... I have my notes do say married. I apologize. But it's okay. Um, we're, uh, uh, we've been together for... Me and uh, Megan have been together for um, about a year and a half, but we haven't... Uh, no, we're not married. But, uh, yes. Uh, I'm a Sox fan. She's a New York Yankees fan. Um, but we both love baseball. And we love sports in general, mm -hmm. but baseball is one thing that we really like, and we try and go to different ballparks and stuff like that. We've since we've been together, we've been able to fortunate enough to go to three ball ballparks so far, and just kind of, yeah, we just. But we both, her uh, family is a big New York, um, New York fans, so yeah, she's she gets a pass. Nice, <laughs> a pass. <laughs> I'm trying, Megan. I'm trying. <laughs> All right. Um, how long? Like, so you've been doing music, but you weren't really like songwriting, songwriting mm -hmm. until kind of more recently. Correct. Uh, Want to talk about musical influences, though? Mm -hmm. What was that first musical influence that made you think, like, I want to, I want to try doing that. I want to try making music, whether it was a person, a genre, a song, or you know. Uh, so for me, music is very. It's how I feel about something, mm -hmm. and so. Um, to me, it's a lot of it is whether it's lyrics or the music itself, because the music can speak to you too. And so, like, there's it's just the feeling that you get when you hear something, and just like when you get goosebumps, whether it's from the lyrics, mm -hmm. like because they're super strong lyrics, but then there's also songs out there that you just you you hear and you're like, man, that also goosebumps just right, right. just from the music. Now, yeah. for, for, my, for me, I'm old enough to remember MTV when it played music videos um, and VH1. <laughs> yeah, see, music videos were these things. No. Uh, me but, as well. I yeah, but so, so I remember <laughs> that a lot of times, if you couldn't actually, if you didn't have, associate a particular song with a, a live moment, mm -hmm. you associated it with a music video. Yeah. And, and that's kind of a thing now where, you know, they're releasing their music videos online uh, on, on various social media. But... Something about seeing it live mm -hmm. is so much more visceral. But I, I agree, uh, goosebumps. I always enjoyed the I always enjoy the moment of a song of a, of, a, of a song where suddenly everything stops for a second, like the waves about to crash, mm -hmm. boom. And that's why I named uh, my indie rock band the Suspense about that moment, just like whoop, boom. Yeah. You know, like you're just about to stomp on the pedal or, or something like that. Um, so yeah, m m music has those pivotal moments, um, and and good music uses them like in, in the right places. So. Yes. Cool. So, from influences, I want to talk about show memories. How long have you been performing just out as Daniel Herod? I've been, perf I, my first, um, the first time that I ever decided to do an open mic was, um, it was the, it was a year before the pandemic. So it was 2019. Or oh, I'm sorry, yeah. Um, so it was like the March of 2019, and I, I went in there, literally just played one song one time, and that was it. And then, um, and then right before the right before the pandemic hit, I was actually scheduled to play uh, for Hal um, in the Songwriter Showcase, and um, and. He already had me in the bill. Like I was excited just because my name was on something. I was mm -hmm. like, "Oh, cool!" And I was gonna go perform three songs. And um, except 
nope. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then it, that got shut down. And so, um, and then it, it opened up, then the Artisan opened up in, back in June um, when we had that brief opening. Yes. Um, and we played, we were able to play a couple times and then it shut down again. And then, um, but then that October, um, we, it was, a, it started to be, uh, we were able to get there every week for a while. Yeah, I was seeing him post a lot of there. Yeah, and um, so when we were, and so I, I owe a lot of my performing live to Hal because not only did he give me the opportunity, but he kept bringing me back. So yeah. he was like, you know, and so I was like, and I was, you know, at that time, the Wednesday nights, like it was, I was free for the most part. Mm -hmm. And so I was like, yeah. And so I just kept going back, kept going back. And um, so I owe that to him. And then I, and the people that I've met because of the songwriter showcase haven't gotten me to record my first single and uh, get my gig at Cleveland's. And um, so, um, you know, there's just people all around from, through that that I was able to, I mean, there's such a good network of, of musicians. Right on. Uh, be right back. We're gonna take a quick booze break, okay? Booze break. Booze break. We're back. Right on. So, the reason I ask about the, uh, you know, how long you've been performing as you, basically, is are there any favorite show memories you have? Like, what's your favorite memory of, of performing wherever it might be? Um, so, I, so at the Artisan, when I, when I got about two or three months into playing there on a regular basis, I was playing there at least probably three times a month at that point, at, at least. Sometimes it was the entire month. Um, and um, once I got to a point where I, I was like, oh my gosh, I can do this, and I'm not nervous, and and that kind of branched into um, being able to go. And so at Cleveland's, when you just have a crowd that is completely, like and I, when I play there, I play for two hours, or three hours sometimes, depending on the night. Uh -huh. And when I go in, and when you just have a crowd that is completely into what you're doing. Right. And I've, I've had it last summer, I had one night um, at Cleveland's where it was just the most fun. Like, the, it was crowd interaction. They were, we were joking with each other on top of that, because it's a small, little intimate place. Mm -hmm. So it was, uh, and so just being able to just chat with them, like chat with them, and then them throw out song ideas too, and and I'm still limited on stuff. So there will be times where I'll be like, well, on my break, I might be able to go try it really quick, and then see if I can play it. And then sometimes I would be able to, and sometimes I'd be like, I was like, I can't do that. But like, I had I had a night like that last summer, uh, probably at the end of July, where it just the you know, the atmosphere was great. There was and it was a teachers conference. Aye. So there's a teachers conference there. So like, they know how to drink. There was, yeah. <laughs> So there's a lot of teachers there, and so I, I got to uh, bond with them through that when I did take little breaks, and, and some of them were from all over the place, and, and some of them, like, uh, some of the people that I would cover are not well known, mm -hmm. so, and I remember playing uh, John Fulbright a song, and there's a lady there that was from Oklahoma, which is where John Fulbright's from, and uh, she was like... I can't believe someone's playing John Fulbright right now. I'm like, it's, I, I did it just for you. I did it just for you. Absolutely. And yeah. so, and she had made, I, mean, I got extra tips. Hey, so. hey, hey, there you go. Know your so, audience. Yeah. Um, now, was that, the Cleveland thing, is that just strictly covers? Oh, no. I, I, I also, I play, because it's such a lie, I don't have that much material, mm -hmm. but because it's such a long time, um, it's, a lot of covers, but then I, I, I'm able to sprinkle in yeah. my And people original. appreciate that. If yeah. they don't know you, if you're not a, a, a known thing, yeah. they appreciate, oh, I know that, oh, I know that, oh, I know that, oh, he wrote that. Yeah. Oh, I know that, oh, I know that, you know. What's fun, what's fun is though, when you play something that's yours, mm -hmm. and then they go, where have I heard that before? I'm like, probably, right here, buddy. probably <laughs> nowhere. <laughs> yeah. Unless you've been to the artisan. <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> right on. Um, cool. We're, we're almost done. A couple more questions. You made it. Yay. <laughs> so far. Um, I want to talk about, briefly, about gear. Now, you've got your, your guitar. Mm -hmm. Do you 
running pedals at all normally? No. No. Nope. No. Nothing. Not even a 200 pedal, okay. No, the only thing, it, um, so through my PA, mm -hmm. um, you know, sometimes I'll, I'll mess with, I'll mess with the levels. Okay. But that's very rare, because most of the time I, I, I like the clean sound. And what's the guitar you're rocking today? Uh, it's a Yamaha. Yamaha? Mm -hmm. uh, do you know the model? I don't. Do, okay. So you're well, not a total gearhead who's no. like, I only use this thickness of strings and I only use these picks. And All I know is that it has a wonderful sound. It does. And when I, um, I'm, um, I don't know how many times I've been to, even the, the artisan, mm -hmm. or I've had a couple people like, can I just play your guitar? Like, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Same. I can play your guitar. Yeah. And you're like, sure. Yeah. I don't mind it. I think it's just, you know, we're, we're kind of, a, we you know, built a nice little family there. And it, so. Yeah, House, House of Art has done a really good job of building a, a community of musicians and, yeah. and people that just come to check it out. Yeah. Um, and, and I'm excited to see where next it, it shows up. Mm -hmm. um, the trick is, of course, venues want to make money. They want to stay in business. So no matter how much they love live music, live original local music, yeah. if, you, if, if you want to support the local music scene, go to a thing. And support the venue. Buy a drink, eat something, buy some merch from the Axe. Do something because it. I don't. I'm not wearing the shirt today. It says that, but I have a shirt. that says support local music. Um, buy merch. Go to shows. Uh, something, something. I forget what. But uh, yeah, and if you're, you're a musician, show up anyway. Even if you're not on the bill. Mm -hmm. um, I always love when I, I'm at a show uh, covering it for the channel, and I see somebody that I know from the channel who's been on the show. Yeah not playing mm -hmm. they're just there and i'm like good on you yeah. that's on you awesome all right last one let's pretend we're talking to little daniel <laughs> now little daniel wasn't really like i'm gonna be a singer songwriter mm -hmm. right that was more middle-aged <laughs> yeah <laughs> sorry <laughs> <It's okay. laughs> rude oh uh, but uh i wanted to, to to know what's one thing you wish people had told you about getting into music that you wish you had known and don't say change your strings <laughs> the um, that it's possible because like I, I like being a, someone who's a late bloomer and uh, in that like I didn't I, I wasn't around a lot of like heavily influenced people that were like go do it do it do it you know and I wish there had been more people that said just do it like you you have the ability or you have you know, a gift for writing, uh, whether it's music or lyrics or whatever. And so I wish there that I would have had somebody in my ear who just said, just do it. You know, mm -hmm. it took me so long to write my first song just because I was scared. I was scared to write, or I thought my lyrics were stupid. All this, and then I remember my very first song that I ever wrote, <laughs> it took me a total of five minutes. Yeah. It literally took me five minutes to write a little, the music for it and then the lyrics just popped and I was done like it was literally a five to ten minute process to get my very first song once I just decided to do it and I just had to get out of my own head to say it doesn't matter what it sounds like because you still did it and now the other thing too is like don't tell don't tell anybody that they can't do something or that like you're still creating no matter what so that creation is still yours and it's for you <laughs> I, I couldn't say it any better i go through every week at least once i have to have that that i have that imposter syndrome and that that you know why am i bothering what am i doing i'm not good enough blah 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 mm -hmm. because i like everybody else i have my youtubers and my, mm -hmm. my TikTokers that are huge they got you know huge followings and 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 big 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 you know view counts and everything yeah. And I'm like, I'm doing the same stuff. What? And it's it's literally, there. There's no magic formula. You just keep doing the thing. Mm -hmm. So yes, um, stick around. We're gonna see Daniel up in room six performing some music. And if you want to know more about where to see him, well, stick around for the outro. In the meantime, we'll temporarily say goodbye. Temporarily goodbye. Clink. Okay, this one's called In the Rain.
Life's full of wonder Presence has a glow Full of childlike innocence She wants you to know Making sick tea Drives your heart Makes you sound born Makes you sound Ground your cool again, go dancing in the rain. Go on your passion, the pain wash away. Question things you wish to unpair. Take a look at your life. Begin to unpair. Deepest desires, love to use goals. Pick up the pieces, fill in the holes. Grab your cold game. Go your pets in the pain wash away. Grab the cold and go dancing. Bask in the sun, dance in the rain. Bats the law, yeah. Both pleasure and pain. Find the true beauty. Don't go missing the chance that you will. Dance in the kitchen, ground will cold down. Go dancing in the rain Go on your pants down Let the pain wash away Grab your coat down Let the pain wash away Don't be afraid of dancing in the rain. Don't be afraid of dancing in the rain. And this one's called Blue, like the color. and shame well 
paints old sky. Scribes on goofy and say We'll make it easy To notice birds up in the sky Dim the music that's playing Where relationships die Oh, Blue Why are you acting so mad? Come on, baby Light that moon Could be so sad Well, clouds in the sky Making brilliant color pop But when I'm in my mood Just want everything, just want everything to stop So it's time for me to focus on these things in nature. Quit worrying about love. My relationship say to Oh, Blue, why are you acting so mad? Come on, baby, well, I need moon Couldn't be so sad Mother Earth, yes, she loves you. Oh, the love of heart. Squeal worrying about the world. Just use that all that are. Oh, Blue, why are you acting so mad? Come on, baby, lightning moon could be so sad.
This one is called Catch on the Lawn. When I was a young boy, I heard a man sing about platinum records, diamond rings. Going on about silly young dreams, and now nothing ever goes say as it seems. Riches are plenty and fancy new clothes. Getting the friends that he knows He looks at himself with his eyes He is in with a brand new surprise He's still that young man he sees With those hopes and grand dreams Shooting hoops in the driveway till dawn and playing catch on his front lawn. And now he's sitting there. With this grin on his face Thinking back to old familiar times Scribbling away with these thoughts in his head Trying hard to find the next rhyme Well, he's still that young man he sees With those souls and grand dreams Shooting hoops in the driveway till dawn And playing catch this front one's called First Meet. Down to your voice Makes my heart race Looking to you when I see your face With name like so And help but grim God's enjoy is the state I'm in No, I don't think I know how In every hour I think of you Wondering if you're thinking of me too Just a patient bill I first meal Trying to get a hold of how I feel No can stop this now 
No, I don't think I know how Can't believe how do you have over me And I look closely It's easy to see My dream was made for me My dream was made for me Today's the day we first meet Kiss your lips and sweep you off your feet Be so happy, oh, oh, oh I cry No longer sitting in the wine Can't believe how do you have over me? I look closely, it's easy to see. My dream was made for me. My dream was made for me. If I look closely, it's easy to see My dream was made for me My dream was made for me My dream was made for me That's me, meant for me. That's me, you meant for me. This one is called All of Me. In the dark you appear And you didn't even hear why When you held my hand real low As the tears flowed my eyes Well, you never made me feel shame Just send me your eyes And she wrapped her arms around me Oh, oh, oh and he held me through the night
When you begin me And I'll be at your side To help your worries be free Baby, I love all of you Straight to your soul oh, Baby, I love all of you Tell me about this no more oh, Baby, I love all of you Straight to your soul Whoa. Baby, I love all of you Tell the earth is no thank Daniel Hemmerich for coming on the channel. It was a great interview and a great performance. If you want to know more about Daniel, click the links down in the description for all his social media and definitely follow him. He's got a new single coming out soon. You'll want to know about that. In the meantime, if you want to be on the channel, whether reviewed, interviewed, or both, hit me up using my email address or a social media link down in the description. The social media link is also where you can find room6.shop where you can get sweet merch. Uh, you can also find ways to support the channel like Patreon with patron-only content. Um, oh yeah, I got a couple CDs of my own, what the heck. Got some really, really cool news coming up very soon, so definitely subscribe, ring the bell. In the meantime, want to see more videos like this, click up there, and if you'd like to subscribe, you know what to do. Remember to be amazing, and we'll see you next time in room six. Say goodbye, Daniel. Goodbye, Daniel. Ba -da -ba -ba -da -bum. <laughs> Perfect! <laughs>